years, MS Teamworks has shared perspectives on MS from all members of the MS team. And although 2020 brought unexpected challenges, we were determined that a pandemic and social distancing would not stop us from sharing new and meaningful perspectives. The setting was different, but the message is the same. I have MS. I have a team. I have a future. I'm Lisa Fox. I'm a physician assistant at John Hopkins Medical Center in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm a physician assistant and I work in the outpatient neuroimmunology clinic with a special focus on multiple sclerosis and neuromyelitis optica. So relapsing remitting MS is an immune-mediated central nervous system disorder that affects the coating around the nerves called the myelin. And what happens is there's a trigger of some um, degeneration of that myelin, which is the coating around the nerves. And your body has these army men, T and B cells. And what happens when it sees that breakdown of that coating around the nerve, your body tries to fix it. So your body comes in and tries to fix that. And by doing that, it actually causes more inflammation. And when that happens, it develops these lesions in the brain or central or in the spinal cord called the cervical or thoracic spine. And then it develops these neurological symptoms. And within relapsing remitting MS, what we see is that we'll have these attacks of part of our body or some of our body having loss of neurological function, such as vision loss, speech or swallowing difficulties, weakness of one arm, or maybe change of sensation of one arm or one leg, weakness of one leg, or bowel or bladder problems, or walking difficulties. And when that happens, a patient may have new neurological symptoms, and then as their body figures it out, then they kind of get back to baseline. And that damage that was done in the central nervous system, meaning the brain, cervical, or thoracic spine, is there, but your body's able to work through it and get your symptoms to resolve to the point that you're able to go back to your baseline. So you have an attack of neurosymptoms, meaning worsening or new onset of neurosymptoms over a brief period of time, your MS symptoms then go back to your original baseline. Now that's called relapse and remitting. It may be a few months later or maybe a few years later where the attack happens again, where your immune system tries to fix something on the myelin or the coating of the nerve and all of a sudden you have another attack of your MS, uh, another attack of new neurological symptoms, and then your body recovers and it goes back to baseline. Those lesions or that attack is still called some damage, but your body is able to uh, compensate and have your body go back to a baseline. So that relapsing remitting is when your body gets a new symptom and then it gets back to baseline. And as we go through life, it depends on how many attacks we have, and that depends on many different, different possibilities from a genetics, environmental, and immune status um, history. So we just discussed relapsing remitting. Now we're going to mention a little bit about progressive MS. Progressive MS, there's primary progressive MS, and then there's secondary progressive MS. I'm going to Kind of start with a secondary progressive MS where we talked about a relapse and remitting where we have an attack and then your neurosymptoms go back to your baseline. But as one ages and time goes by, we might have that attack on our central nervous system. Remember the brain, cervical, or thoracic spine, but our body may not make it back to baseline. So we've accumulated a little bit of neurosymptoms such as, let's say your right arm's not as strong. But then you might have another attack and you might not make it to baseline, meaning you might not go back to where you were before, and you now accumulated your right legs a little bit weaker too. So as you age and as your immune system um, gets older, your army men are still working hard to fight new attacks, but we're still having the old neurosymptom just be a little bit more notable, and that's more of a secondary progressive MS. Now from a primary progressive MS, it's a different type of disease state and the, from a relapsing remitting MS form where patients don't necessarily have that attack. We don't see a patient have acute new on, meaning sudden onset of neuro symptoms and then get back to baseline. Patients usually develop some neuro symptoms and they continue to slowly 
continue to evolve in terms of increased symptoms such as weakness, um, numbness, tingling, bowel, bladder issues, walking difficulties, vision changes. So we slow, see a slow continuation of the worsening of your neurological symptoms. And that's more of a primary progressive where we don't have those ups and down of attacks. What we have is just slow progression of your neuro symptoms. So in terms of treating multiple sclerosis and the difference between primary progressive and relapsing remitting MS, um, there's many different thoughts and a lot of, and every neurologist you see may have a different varying opinion of what is the best medication for someone. What we do know is that when an MS attack occurs, there is underlying central nervous system damage that has occurred brain, cervical, or thoracic. So the spinal cord or the brain has had some of nerve and um, cellular changes. Even though you might have recovery of your neurological symptoms in MS, we still see that change on the brain or the MRI, the cervical or thoracic spine. So we know the damage is underlying there, but we may not, but we might have improvement of our neurosymptoms. But if we continue to accumulate neurological lesions in the brain or cervical spine, then we can may with time as we age through the immunosuccessance period, start to see old lesions rear in their ugly head as we get older. So the big thing is treating MS early to help prevent any further neuro lesions in the brain or cervical thoracic spine so that once you get, um, as you age, then your MS symptoms are less notable. I like to do a correlation with MS medications similar to kind of a birth control. Um, we use birth controls to prevent any further pregnancies. MS medications are used to prevent any further MS lesions from building up or accumulating. Because once you get an MS lesion, I can't reverse it. Once somebody has a baby, the baby will be with them. So it's the same concept of try to prevent further progression of um, MS lesions so that we don't have an accumulation of underlying neurological symptoms. Now, given that said, there are many different MS medications out there. We have quite a bit, I think, believe over 18 MS medications now. And I think that for the past couple of months, we've had some generics now become more readily available. So we have significant number of MS medications for relapsing, remitting MS. And each of those MS medications allow different efficacy, meaning a different percentage of patients from having further progression or relapses. Um, and then each of these medications vary on how they, well they affect the MRIs in terms of our central nervous system. They can re prevent any further lesions from happening in your brain or your cervical or thoracic spine. Now, with the increased efficacy, then you always have to discuss the side effect profile as well for each of these medications. And then you have to cater what the best medication is for the individual sitting in front of you in terms of their MS, where they are in their life, what are their expectations? What are their other concomitant medical conditions? What they want out of life? Will they take a pill? Will they take an infusion? Will they take an injection? These are things that you have to cater towards each patient to make the best fit for them where they are in their MS. So it's very important because there's so many different options with relapsing, remitting MS medications to hear the patient, listen to them from head to toe, understand their family dynamics, understand what they want out of life so that you can best work with them for the best medication. Because there's not one medication that's going to fit all. We have to kind of do our best in that respect. Now, from a primary progressive standpoint, there is one MS medication recently, well, relatively approved a few years ago um, that has been approved for primary progressive MS. And because of the different mechanism and the disease state, um, this is, it slows down the progression of the um, disability um, in that respect. So the main thing I'd like for you to take away from this video is that MS is an underlying chronic neurological condition and everybody presents differently. I like to say MS is like a snowflake. There's not one person that's going to have the same disease course as the person next to you. And every one of us has different um, things in their life that are going on, different ages, different family backgrounds, different social stressors. And we as providers need to listen to you to help you improve your quality of life and improve your activity of daily living because MS is with you and we want to make it 
something in the background. We want to say, oh, I want you to say, yes, I have MS, but this is, I'm doing really well from it. I am ha not having any major neurological symptoms, or if I am, I'm able to move forward with life because I'm able to do these things about for myself. And for us as providers and helping you understand what the disease state in itself means, what medications can help prevent any further progression and doing and hitting um, and allowing you to learn of the MS medications earlier on to prevent any further lesions, to keep you as independent, to keep you as active and as young as possible is the best thing that I would like for you to take away from this uh, presentation. Mm -hmm.